Let's discuss this now with Republican Senator Mike Rounds of South Dakota. Senator, thanks very much for taking time this morning. Good morning. So on the shutdown, it, you had a rare show of unity from former Homeland Security secretaries, five of them, including the president's chief of staff. He was chief of staff for this president when this shutdown began, John Kelly, saying, end this shutdown now because it is threatening national security. What's your response to that? Nobody wins in a shutdown. We shouldn't have had it in the first place. The question is, is how do we get out of it? You have two leaders, uh, Speaker Pelosi and the president, that both have to have some way out. We'll have these two votes today. I don't think either one of them is going gonna, is gonna to pass. But it's taken us 30 days to get to this point. It never should have taken this long to get to this stage. Uh, but at that point, then, I think cooler heads can start to prevail. And I think we'll find something in the middle. Neither, nothing in the middle has yet come up that either side can agree to. But let uh, me the ask you this. Did, yeah, go ahead. Because the, the Democratic proposal is simply to reopen the government for two weeks while negotiations continue so that these 800,000 people, including Coast Guard sailors, can get paid and not have to go to food banks to feed their family. Why not, like your Republican colleague Cory Gardner, vote for that bill to reopen the government just for a short period of time while those negotiations go on? Because at this point, if the president does not agree, it would take two-thirds vote in the Senate and in the House. Most of us don't think that we've got two-thirds of a vote to do that because would it would take a it? presidential veto on it. Would not you if all it does is delay it. Not if, it. not if all we do is delay this until such time as we work our way through the process, have a presidential veto, and then have to override or at least look at an override on it. We're better off to find a, a solution before that and one which is palatable to all sides. But aren't you I then enabling... So, sorry, aren't you then enabling the president here to, in effect, hold these workers hostage uh, f for political reasons? Because it, it seems like the, the, the dynamic here is he does not want to yield on the wall because he feels he would be punished by his base. It's quite a price to pay, is it not, to see DHS employees, Coast Guard employees, IRS employees, you, you name it, having to go to food banks to feed their families. You can say the same thing about our colleagues on the other side of the aisle because what the president is saying is, is make a deal for, with us on securing that border. We'll redefine, we'll make modifications. Speaker Pelosi to this point has said nothing for you. I will not come off dead center. That is just the same thing as you're suggesting with the president, except the president did modify his original proposal. Nobody seems to understand that this is gonna take modifications on both parts. And I think we're getting close to that point today. The question is, is, is there a plan B? I think there may be. I think there's several options out there that both sides might be able to say, we don't like it, but it's better than continuing this, uh, this absurd shutdown. I, I want to ask you this because uh, Wilbur Ross, uh, the Commerce Secretary, made some comments this morning about those federal workers who aren't getting paid. Have a listen because I want to get your reaction. Well, first of all, the banks and the credit union should be making credit available to them. When you think about it, these are basically government guaranteed loans because the government has committed these folks will get their back pay once this whole thing gets settled down. There are reports that there are some federal workers who are going to homeless shelters to get food. Well, I know they are, and I don't really quite understand why, because, as I mentioned before, they, the obligations that they would undertake, say a borrowing from a bank or a credit union, are in effect federally guaranteed. So the 30 days of pay that some people will be out, there's no real reason why they shouldn't be able to get a loan against it. You have the Commerce Secretary there who, of course, happens to be a billionaire, saying he doesn't understand why these people have to go to food banks. Uh, does he not understand uh, the predicament these people are in? I think what he's suggesting is an alternative, but it's not one that's palatable to a whole lot of people. Mm -hmm. And it does suggest that maybe we're not understanding how serious this is, not just to federal government workers, but to contractors and also to the people that they offer services to. It's not like these individuals, these 800,000 individuals and contractors aren't providing services to the rest of the American public. Ag workers in South Dakota, uh, farmers who need to be able to get in and get plans made for the coming year, individuals who need loans approved uh, through, the, through uh, uh, different federal agencies, uh, including the Department of Ag, all of those 
are feeling the, the, the impact of this. Look at our Coast Guard. We've got guys that are going on a five month appointment out of South Dakota right now on, on Coast Guard. They don't know what they can do to feed their families. We've provided a specific uh, alternative, which right now our colleagues on the other side of the aisle have said no deal on Coast Guard until we make a deal on everybody. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of blame to go around here for a lot of pain and suffering that is absolutely unnecessary. And I think in the future, Congress should hold itself accountable by simply saying, if we don't get all of our work done, come hell or high water by the September 30th, we don't get paid either. And that means uh, we right. don't get any back pay either. We put mm -hmm. it in, it's, I'm one of the co-sponsors on the bill, but some people say, well, why is Congress getting paid when the rest of the government, a lot of yes. the other federal employees are not? And the reason is, is because Congress cannot alter its own pay without an intervening election in between. So. Let our best bet uh, is, is let's fix it in the future. But before we go, I want to ask you a question on another topic uh, on yeah. Russia. You voted in favor uh, of lifting sanctions uh, on a Kremlin ally, uh, Oleg Deripaska. Why, I wonder, did you, uh, particularly when he had a role in the interference in the 2016 election? The, the original, the original uh, uh, limitations that were put on the businesses that he's actively involved with was designed to change his behavior. We had actually uh, Secretary Steve Mnuchin in, Secretary of the Treasury Steve Mnuchin in. We heard briefs from both the uh, chairman of the, uh, the Intelligence Committee and the Banking Committee, who's both said, look, we've looked at this thing. Uh, they have honored what we demanded of them in terms of the limitations that we put on them to begin with. They have complied with our law. We don't well, like it. We wish we had another alternative. But if we don't do it, are not then we're not following our own law. To, to be fair, those limitations are not as severe as, as the secretary uh, described them. According to the New York Times, documents show that Deripaska and his allies, they will keep majority ownership of these companies. How is that a fair punishment for, for an ally of the Russian president who helped Russia interfere in a U.S. presidential election? The information that was received just this week was not information that most of us had seen when we made our decision last time. We're going to take another look at it. But I will also tell you that in this particular case, the idea was not to destroy the company, but to, to impact the individuals responsible for the illicit activities. But yeah, the other side of this is, is that if we would have destroyed the company, the remnants would have either been mm -hmm. nationalized by Mr. Putin, making him stronger, or it would have been bought by one of their competitors, a Chinese, uh, Chinese competitor who would have loved to have taken over those on, for pennies on the dollar. So it, we found ourselves in a very precarious position of do you ignore the recommendations of both the Treasury Secretary and the Chairman of the Intelligence Committee as well as the Chairman of the Banking Committee uh, who have okay. looked at it. Uh, or do you, do, you, do you, you know, in this particular case, we didn't want to send a message to the rest of the world that even though it says in law and in our rules that they have complied, um, do you turn around and simply say, ah, oh, we're just going to change our mind right now and our rules and our laws uh, are going to take you know, right. second place to our own opinion? 